All right, folks, welcome back to the XTS Custom Shop here in Nashville, Tennessee. And we have a special, special treat today. Usually it's just me and Eric here Hi. on the rig walkthroughs. But guess what? Today we have Corey Congelio. Oh, that's my favorite place in Nashville. And it makes sense that Corey's here because this is Corey's board, right, Corey? Yeah. So we just finished this up. Corey, a couple of weeks ago in the last month, brought in all these pedals. And this is a kind of a redo of another version of this board that we did. Gosh, it's been several years ago now, right? Yeah, yeah. Got to got to make an update. Once yeah. In a while. So sometimes it just. I mean, what what's your thought on that? Like, why why change? What I did, the old board was kind of chasing what everybody does in Nashville. Uh, Nobles, Moss Dorsion, Lightspeed. I used all those anyway, but I wanted to make a board that was like, okay, I want to have some fun, you know. And we all know. Tom Bukovac and I came in here one day when he was like, "This is my this is my summertime board. This is gonna be fun." And I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna make a fun board too. Like something that's not like, oh, I have to have the usable suspects. I want to make something that has a lot of fun shit on it." And uh, pardon my language, and <laughs> and just uh, have some fun. Yeah. It's gonna live in the studio, so this is gonna be great. Yeah, and to that end, the studio end, like this might. I mean. Would this be too tight for you for a stage performance piece, like as far as the buttons and everything, or is this still... Uh, probably not, because most of the real usable stuff I always try to put down on the bottom, right. or very close, like if I need a tram or a roto, that's quick and easy, you know, Noble's light speed, very quick, um, I, you know, maybe the dude, that's about it, but like, I, I'd figure it out, but this is more about a palette as opposed to... I have a smaller board that's a little more functional. You know? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. So uh, we'll do this uh, team style. Eric, you want to walk us through the the flow? Yeah. Let me see if I can remember it. <laughs> It'll be a test because Corey, <laughs> Corey could jump right on your back. It starts at the interface over here. Uh huh. And then volume, volume pedal, yep. experience. Now talk about the experience fuzz for a bit because that I think is getting to sort of legendary yeah status. Um it is so unique because it is an octave fuzz and it has that funky swell function which is kind of like the reverse Hendrix sort of it almost sucks your tone like it in a good way. <laughs> like it it sucks the tone in and almost does like this sort of gating reverse fuzz kind of thing. It's, it can do like terrible in the best it's a noise box. The, yeah. It's an amazing. It's it's like, you can call it a secret weapon if you want, but you know, come to think, I almost sold that thing, and now I'm glad I did. Sure. <laughs> Considering it was a gift many years ago. So yeah. I think from there, we might hit the other. I have a couple other fuzzy type things. Mm -hmm. Is that right, Eric? I think it's the brute. Yeah, this pedal is great. This is Spiral Electrics. Tom Cram um, makes these. Who did all of these great Digitech pedals? Mm -hmm. Like he was the brains behind those. It's like three fuzz pedals in one. It's like silicon, germanium, and then his own thing. And it's great as even an overdrive. Like, turned all the way up, it's, it feels like a drive. It's great. And so I this would be a little bit milder, and this is wilder exactly. in your application? Exactly. So if you know the DRD Carcosa, okay. he designed that, and this has that body in it. I love that pedal. So yeah, it's, it embodies a, cool, a lot of that. That's a cool pedal. Yeah. So Brute, then... Maybe Comp or TSR? I think it's a TSR. I think it's a TSR, too. Which so, is which is a great. That's one of those pedals where I thought before I heard it, I thought that's eh, kind of dubious. Mm -hmm. Could that really make that big of a difference? But if you've got a rig that's like really dialed in already, mm -hmm. and you step on that, it is like just a little bit extra. So the trick, is, the thing is, is it's built after the Schaefer wireless mm -hmm. preamp, which is the, what Angus would use even in the studio, wireless in the studio. And I'll plug this into my Marshall. And it completely changes the amp. Like, it takes it into Eddie Van Halen world, Angus world. Like, it's, it does something to the front end. So I decided to put it on as kind of like an always-on right. boost. Is, or, a, you know, because we don't have any dedicated buffers necessarily, although there's plenty of buffering in some of these pedals, mm -hmm. which I would love for you to talk about at some point. Well, we typically tell people, and maybe we've had this conversation, Corey, it's like you don't want one more buffer than you have to have. Right. Because yeah. you always have to pay the thermodynamic piper every buffer is going to add some level of noise or right. something. And you've got several preampy things here sure. with the, with the solo Dallas, the GE 10, yep. all that stuff that, you know, you don't really need a lot more low impedance stuff. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And 
um, it, you know, a healthy balance of buffered and non-buffered, I think, is totally yeah, totally kosher. Yep, for um, sure. Then it's probably into the drives or something or a compressor. Compressor. Yeah. I actually realized that I made a list. That's right. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, when so, they get this big, <laughs> the list is. You very will need helpful. to find your way back yeah. home. Yeah, essentially. So, I I think. For the Corey signature compressor, you guys are going to make for me. Yeah, totally. <laughs> if we could make the small version of that, it's awesome because I'm so always looking for a low end control. Yeah. In my compressor, we just rename that to Corey. There you go. Yeah. Set a exactly. contour. There you go. Right. And that pedal does it remarkably well. It's it's freaky to even feel it. Right. Because when you're playing, you feel the higher frequencies compress and the lower ones don't. It's it's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. For you guys that don't know, this desensitizes the the um, the compressor detector element from bass frequency so if you have that set way up and the sustain is way up and you play from like the first position all the way up you can right. feel it start you to grab it's really crazy when justin heard that he was like that's weird <laughs> it's so usable though, particularly for he plays a lot of slide you know if you're doing that kind of thing mm -hmm. or you're doing like a one of neil sean long extended thing yeah it's going to grab those high notes which is what i use compressors for a lot yeah um, and you can go back to first position and it's still yeah it's, it's not hyper squish particularly if you're playing with like an offender amp or something that's got a kind of a muddy bottom end sure when, when not tamed properly it's going to yep. really mess with it What's uh, next? Light speed? I think the Ventura. Okay. Is in I here think we then. rip across the bottom there. Yeah, then it's just. Yeah, so this is a really great roto kind of sound. It also it does a univibe and it does its own thing. Um, I have um, the dry bell on my other board, which I really love, but this is good for multi use also. Um, and I was like, I like having this available to me because it's fun to do ramp ups and things like that. Mm -hmm. at a, at a moment's and notice. a good reason to have that on the first row there yeah and then you can also kind of put it into drives so you can have that really broken up sort of leslie thing mm -hmm. too totally then um so light speed light speed and i wore my greer shirt today he did folks i did I can vouch that. For <laughs> um been been on this ever since john osborne told me about it about four years ago yeah um love this thing um need a tweed sound you go to the chupacabra from mythos pedal greer also makes another one which i have which is the tomahawk mm -hmm. great pedal mm -hmm. um but i love the uh, zach at mythos so i wanted to have him on my board too that's great josh jhs got a little super bolt here um and just something different doesn't sound like anything sounds like a broken amplifier to yep. me a lot of times which i love yep then of course um home base home base odr1 followed by the karma mtn10 which is like um, the Ibanez Mostortion clone, yep. basically. Yep. This is uh, this is a really, really... I put them back to back, and it's awesome. And the thing about it is, is if you want to run these together, I like to do kind of like a mid-boost, treble down, and it puts some mids back into your uh -huh. into your nobles, which if is really great. If you need a little great. more nose. Yeah, for sure. Uh, then where Dude. We dude. Dude. Up yeah. here. So up and away, but this is sort of your smooth... I think we missed the sidecar. Oh, no, we did. Yeah. Sidecar is between these but, two. So oh, this this is like, go. they claim it's like the tube screamer uh, like circuit, but to me it doesn't sound like that. But it gets gnarly, and I wanted something. These two, I wanted to have a crazy option of different drives. Yeah, so, we put one of those on Kevin Scaff's board. I really like it. It's yeah. it's super unique sounding for yeah, sure. Then cool then one. the dude is that so dude, then yeah. after Mostortion or yeah. Karma, then the dude. And that's in a good spot too if I am live and I have to go right from here to here, I can grab it for my high gain. Because the dude is one of my favorite high gain overdrives for sure. It it can just do all of the real creamy lead stuff. Yeah, the you singy want. stuff. For sure. Alright, yeah. so then dude and then The insert. That's right. Insert. I forgot about that. So this has it's a studio thing, right? So you don't want to be caught without the ability as as many dirts as this has there still might be that one thing whether it's a dirt or a modulation yeah or it could be a pitch thing you know totally. some kind of whammy thing which i didn't want to take up too much real estate with those i, I like the drop i like the ricochet but i didn't want to you know compromise too yeah. much yeah um, the ricochet would be a great one to put up there. and and i could swap that out here too but the ricochet is awesome for yeah. sure all right now so where? let's see back in the tremolo Tough to beat a Boss Trem. This is the JHS modded one. It's got a little buffer knob on there to kind of boost your input. Mm -hmm. um, as many times as I go back and forth between all the different tremolos out there, it's tough to beat um, the Boss or the yeah the Boss TR2. Yeah, and it's uh, that WYSIWYG control setup, right? There's no menus. There's no yeah, exactly. It just, just sounds like a Fender and grab know. it. Yeah, it sounds like what you expect your tremolo to sound like. And if I need something wacky, I can go here too. You know, which 
uh, an M M5 is still still viable. Yep. It's the JH V3 uh, mod too. Yeah, so. Jack does a great job. Yeah, making them very useful for sure. Um, I think that's where we were going anyway. That's right? the From next there. one. Yeah. Then Echo Park. Yep. Um, George Tripp's design line six Echo Park still a classic. Yep. Great um, pedal. And you guys modded it to take a tap control. Yes. So and this is Eric, you can see, put a hole in it, and uh, that basically takes the the contact closure out of this, translates it to this. So you can tap this or spin this knob, and uh, and get the the Echo Park. And it, and we disabled the tap here, right? Because that's part of the funny business with that, right? It can be hard sure. to kind of pick. I didn't. Yeah. It's not doing what I thought it was going to do. Right, right. Because it's did, such a yeah. No, because I didn't step on it hard enough, exactly, or I stepped on it too exactly. hard. Exactly. It's such a great sounding delay that I, I have a bunch of other delay options, but I'm very picky because they have to kind of blend in with your your tone and kind of sit behind your normal tone, and that's what that pedal does. Great. Um, broken knob, lost knobs, and all. It's, you know. <laughs> but this is tracking. cool. Yeah, <laughs> this is cool because you can um, select BPMs. And you know by the number by the readout. So sure. so if you've if, got a chart or yep, something, if I got something that's at one ten, I can go right there, and then I can set presets, and the presets will do quarters, eighths, exactly. dotted, all that stuff. So great pair. Really, really cool. I was glad that was a cool find for me. Yep. I and think. so then uh, true spring. True spring. True spring. Um, Any more? I don't need all of the symphonic reverbs that are out there. Sure. Um, this has plenty of them anyway. Has you know the classic mm -hmm. um, line six verbs that are in that. I love Source Audio. They make great stuff. And this is just simple enough for me to use. Um, and then I just I love spring reverb. So yeah. that's one of the best ones out there. I think it is. I think uh, Scotty Murray was one of the first ones and came in and said it actually sounds like a spring. Yeah, yeah. And you can tell when pedals don't like. There's there's a disconnect there for sure. Um, then the slow from Walrus. I met those guys um, last year out at Sweetwater, and I had really never dove into their stuff. They were doing a presentation, and they said, um, "Hey man, we know what you do." And I was like, "I think I know what you guys do." And they're like, well, "Let's send you a pedal to try out." So they sent me this. And I was like, this is as much fun in a reverb as I'll need. Sure. So let's add it to the And these are a well. good pair. You know, you've got yeah. meat and potatoes, and, but you're not trapped with just simple spring. You've got this, which is kind of the antithesis of the true spring yep. with everything that that yep. does. Uh, and, and then, then we, we spit polished the whole thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, we forgot freeze. about that. We, we we're in here oh, at freeze. some point. And the freeze. Yes. So I thought in a fun, you know, you know creative board, and I also do a lot of teaching, so it's cool to be able to maybe grab a chord uh -huh. and somebody say, okay, well, here's a D minor 7. I'm going to play D Dorian over top of this now. And you hold it, and then I sound like Scott Henderson from the 80s. <laughs> in my worst impression ever, probably. Right. Um, yeah, from there, probably the GE10. Then. That's right. So that's the last thing. Found, you know, speaking of Ford and Book, Ford sent me a link on Reverb. He's like, you got to buy this now. And I was like, okay. It was like a, some crazy cheap price, brand new. And yeah, I was like, all right, great. this is the Super Van Halen... Clean you know, EQ, and let's add that to the board. Because I love a GE7, and I use it for so much, so. And this has got a very cool preamp that's sort of bespoke to it. Right. And it really is something different. I think that's one of the reasons Book has dug it, because I think a lot, uh, many times he'll leave it flat yep. and just push push the level all the way up. Yeah, I may have spied on him doing that. So it's a, it's a great, it's great for just nailing you yep. know, an amp that you like with, with more stuff. Yeah, and that's um, Justin Butler's uh, Ernie, Vol Ernie Ball volume mod. Yeah, that's right. So you got um, the drag control. Yep, and it's great because it's a, there's a buffer in that as well, mm -hmm. particularly for the, the tuner output, which which I think they do stock now, probably thanks to how many he's yeah, modded I think over they've the finally, years. Yeah, they finally you know. kind of caught up with that's necessary. And uh, can, we, can we tip her up? Yeah. Mm -hmm. True Tone doing the power supply. Yeah. You see Eric's got those all labeled just in case. Freaking gorgeous. If something happens to go wrong, you can you can see what pedal might be flaking out instead of just reaching down there feeling compelled to yank everything. And you can see there he dressed that yeah. EQ pedal uh, stuff. So Yep. Beautiful. That's it. This is gonna be a hard working oh, board. I'm excited. Yeah. Well lots of fun. I know uh, we'll be looking forward to hearing what you do with it and i know a lot of other people will as well thanks guys so Corey, thanks so much eric you. say bye to the people bye people bye people